Good afternoon, everyone. Far north Queensland, Cairns, coldest since 1953. That's at 19 and a half degrees south latitude. Keeps snowing in Australia, getting close to the best numbers this century. You can see it from the satellite, and there's at least double that amount on the way in the next two weeks. Households offered cash to switch off the aircon because of dodgy. Renewable energy policies in Australia, down to Brazil. Number of cold hours increasing, so is fruit production. And during these times of uncertainty with our global food production, how prepared are you for price rises and inavailability of food in case there's a problem in our credit system and the lockup and just-in-time delivery? My Patriot Supply, two-week grab-and-go food crate, or the four-week food supply. The link's in the description box below, and it's a way to support the ADAPT 2030 channel. And I've been told it's the warmest year ever in Australia. But here we go, frosty night, northern Queensland. Coldest August night in more than 60 years. We have to go back to 1953 to find anything this cold. Let's take a look on the map here where Cairns is. You see that big island to the north up there? That's Papua New Guinea. And as we progress here, the 22nd, taking a look at the temperatures marching into the 23rd. Have you here off tropical tidbits? Temperature anomalies, we can see same areas showing purple. Well below normal temperatures, August 22nd, 23rd. And whoa, look at this, August 28th. Another cold front sweeping through. Expect more record cold temperatures. Looking for another two to three feet of snow down in the Victorian Alps in this. Showing huge accumulations in the GFS model. Bureau of Meteorology in Queensland. Dry air and clear skies leading to chilly night across... Cairns Airport, coldest August minimum since 1953, 8.9 degrees Celsius in the tropics, no less. And it dropped to just one-tenth of a degree above freezing in Ravenshoe. Also, weather zone picking it up here. Cairns Airport, registered lowest August temperature since 1953. And you can clearly see where the edge of the cold front is here. This is a great image satellite. That's pushing really far north, and then it continued all the way up to Papua New Guinea, which I'm trying to dig into to see what temperatures they received and if it was record cold. Now, with the dodgy policies in the Australian government, demolishing coal-burning power plants, gas-burning power plants, reducing the use of fossil fuels, they're relying on unreliable wind turbines and solar panels. So here we are. They're stuck in the own quagmire. Households will be offered cash to switch off their air conditioners and help prevent blackouts this summer. Meaning, they don't have enough reliable power because they're relying too much on renewables and not in the real world where Stable power means growing economy. Snowforecast.com. It keeps snowing in Australia. Base depths and a number of resorts are now past the two meter mark. And that's getting close to the best numbers this century. And remember, there's another three feet on the way over the next week or 10 days. It's going to add up here. We saw the images from the pilots showing the Victorian Alps covered in snow. And here we are, satellite image, the snow extent, Victorian Alps, New South Wales. Now jumping over to Brazil, South America, cold hours increasing, cheer up fruit growers. Now what does that mean? I was told it's the warmest year ever, but wait a second, we have more cold hours for the fruit growers? And because of the cooler conditions, last year's 324,000 tons of apples are going to increase to 400,000 tons of apples. And taking a look at the numbers here, 2018 had 352 hours of cold 2019, 600 hours of cold. Now, the optimal growth is 900. And look at the increased production in San Joaquim, up to 400,000 tons expected this year. In Santa Catarina, 600,000 tons due to cooler growing conditions in the low cold hours. Now, if we're told it's record heat and fruit growing regions are showing that it's getting cooler with the number of hours, I think there's a disconnect in the information provided to us. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. We talk about these very same issues in climate revolution, the grand solar minimum. Understand, prepare, adapt, and thrive. The link's in the description box below. There's an entire chapter devoted to manipulated temperatures to show a warming trend to continue the funding gravy train as long as you say CO2, payday for you. But out here in the real world, it seems to be cooling on our planet.